afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. I'm Claire. This is Benny a True Nerd, and welcome to 200,000 subscribers special. Second take. We actually been at this type YouTube. It's not gonna, it's not gonna go wrong. Um, obviously, we are in London, probably as you probably guessed, because that's the National Gallery, and that's a, that's a fountain. And this is, this is a, this is a British guy who defeated a lot of French guys, which is why I brought Claire here. I told her it was just because it was a well-known landmark. I just kind of wanted to begin this challenge in a place where an English person defeated a French person because an English person is going to defeat a French person today because we're playing competitive Pokemon Go around London. Here are the rules. Here are the rules. Claire, do you want to start off with the rules? Well, the rules is we have to catch them all. We have to catch as many Pokemon as we can, as many different unique Pokemon as we can. Yep. Here's what we've done. We've both got ourselves up to level six. We're starting yep. at level six, so it's all the same. And we've taken all the Pokemon we've already caught and we've favorited them, so they don't count. So we have to catch as many individual Pokemon as possible. That is one of the challenges. It's whoever gets the first out two out of three, or indeed three out of three. The second challenge is strongest Pokemon. Whoever brings at the end of this day the Pokemon with the highest CP. And finally, the rarest Pokemon. We don't know how to calculate that exactly, so we're just gonna say whichever has a Pokemon that's the highest number in the Pokedex. So whoever wins two out of three, or indeed three out of three of those challenges, wins, and thus we decide who is the best out of Britain versus France. So we're allowed to go anywhere in London there's no rules there we shouldn't really use public transportation we have to do all of this on foot we're both level six we're both starting from zero because anything we've already caught doesn't count so this should be a nice fair contest great shake shake hands we call the handshake there we go handshake good honorable contest here and we have got what is it three hours three hours we've got three hours i'll be taking one camera claire will be taking another so we'll be kind of seeing both of our viewpoints as we go around we don't know the other tactics but it should be absolutely fine all right three two one gotta catch them all okay claire's gone it's just me now um so here's how i'm planning to cheat uh we said we had to start off at level six no one actually ever said anything about exactly how many experience points into level six so i've actually engineered so I'm about 200 XP away from level 7. So I should be able to get up to level 7 in about 3 minutes. I don't know if that gives me an advantage, but I'm hoping it will give me at least a small advantage over Claire. Hopefully I might get some higher level, kind of higher CP Pokemon showing up, which is good. Uh, we're starting off in Trafalgar Square. There's like, um, there's, there's lures. Lures, this is not going to show up in the slightest, is it? Film my phone, by the way, but like there's absolutely no way any of it's going to show up. So there's absolutely no point whatsoever. We're just going to get it walking around London. Yeah, people are laying lures like crazy around Trafalgar Square so this is fine so we're starting off with some nice easy captures because there's Pokemon absolutely literally everywhere okay as we get Pokemon number one which was ghastly so there we are we're off to a good start I've got a plan which is this whole catch the highest number of Pokemon things is totally for losers because all I need to do is win two out of the three and I've won overall so I don't need to win everything all I need to do is find one super rare kind of high in the Pokedex Pokemon and I'll win the rarity award then I need to find one super common Pokemon, I'm totally thinking of Pidgey, and then just catch like 20 of them, evolve it into Pidgeot, and get it as high as possible. There's a big helicopter somewhere over there, I don't know what's happening. Okay, the plan is working, I've literally just leveled up to level 7, I've also caught a Drowsy. That could be a good, really, really common one, I've been seeing a lot of Hypnos guarding gyms. If I could catch a ton of Drowsies, that Hypno could win the strongest Pokemon pretty bloody easily. I feel like I should hang around here in Trafalgar Square, people are laying lures like crazy. I'm going to head towards the two lures, see what goes on and we'll work from there all right the plan's working well so far i've picked myself up like three ghastlies and two drowsies i saw claire heading towards the center of london i don't know what her plan is i'm gonna head down towards parliament feels like there's a lot of open space down there plus that takes me in the direction of the two parks uh st james's and green park if i head in that direction should be a ton of grass ton of water should be able to get a load of grass types and water types also picked up a bell sprout for some reason in trafalgar square not one pidgey which quite frankly strikes me as odd. I didn't look at a map before leaving the house. However, I did bring an A to Z with me, which is like a little book of the streets of London to, um, to be able to look at a map without checking my phone and draining some more battery from it. So I should be able to uh, find my way, no problem. I'll admit, playing Pokemon Go in central London does give the whole thing a little bit more gravitas. That's um, Field Marshal Haig over there. He just gave me three Pokeballs. Good for him. That's Downing Street ahead of us, by the way. That is the seat of UK government. So naturally, I'm expecting to run into some nasty, heartless, transparent, stinging creatures. Also, I'm hoping I might be able to catch a tentacle. Now, so far, I have seen a lot of Pokestops, but I haven't seen a lot of actual Pokemon. I've caught 
a drowsy, a ratata and a ghastly, uh, but that was pretty close to Trafalgar Square and I haven't really seen anything else since. So I'm going to try and head towards other landmarks and see uh, if there are other people, other places that people have placed lures. So that's Downing Street over there and I swear I'm not making this up, I just caught a slow poke outside it, so political satire is at this point dead. Also, hang on just a second, boo! Okay, feel better now. So here we have one of those little columns that are everywhere in London that tell you where you are in town and we just came from Trafalgar Square and I'm now following... where's my finger? Okay, currently at the back side of the statue of Winston Churchill, House of Parliament are over there, that's Westminster Cathedral, I think, I'm not sure, I think it is. Um, but more importantly, someone's laid down a lure next to Winston Churchill, which is attracting the attention of a lot of Pokemon, which is good. I've just got like my third Ghastly, which is magnificently good news, caught a really good Nidorina which is like 236 CP already. Might actually be a good candidate for the strongest if I can just catch some basic Nidoran females. But I'm not seeing much variety around here. I may need to move up towards St. James's Park, which is more down in that direction. And then I might be able to catch some more unique sorts because there's a serpentine down there. Big body of water might work for me. Also, um, second way I'm planning to cheat, by the way. Uh, we agreed the Pokemon we had wouldn't count. We never said anything about eggs. I've got two eggs and two incubators quite close to hatching. Kind of hoping that they might be good ones. Anyway, it's not really a problem having to walk so much because I've got two eggs in an incubator and I've got to do those five kilometers. I think John has two eggs incubating as well, uh, so when they hatch they definitely count. Okay, we've hit St. James's Park and the Serpentine beyond it. Admit, I'm hoping for water types. Claire looked like she was heading into the city, so I don't know where she's going to get water from. So given there is a huge, huge number of water types in Generation 1 relative to every other type, this should give me the advantage. After doing Covent Garden and trying to find some parks and stuff that way, I'm going to go down to the Thames to get some water to get some water Pokemon. So far my trip through St James's Park has basically delivered a very large number of slow posts. Some strong ones mine could be a good candidate if I can evolve it into Slowpro, my strongest Pokemon. Someone's activated a lure on the far side of that bridge. I'm going to go and investigate that now. Could be a source of yet more slow pokes. And that's kind of where I'm putting my, uh, my hopes right now. There's also talk of a Jinx nearby. That could be a good candidate for the rarest Pokemon, assuming I can't find a bloody Dratini in any of the water I'm passing. John did specifically say public transport and, you know, a bike isn't, in fact, public transport. And, uh, you know, I quite like the fact that uh, we use a bike in the old game, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to cycle. It's, it's a thing Pokemon trainers do. So. Kind of didn't mean to, but accidentally found my way to Buckingham Palace. Queen doesn't actually live here. Um, interestingly, we also go for a castle. Warwick, she doesn't live there either. There's a castle, I believe, uh, in Kensington just off High Park, she doesn't live there either. Quite frankly, someone should have a word with her about not really appreciating the stuff she has. Uh, also, apparently there's two gyms here. There's two separate gyms around Buckingham Palace, one controlled by Valor, one by Mystic, which is, uh, which is intriguing. They seem to actually be attacking each other right now, too. So now I'm hanging out in Lincoln's Inn field, sat on a bench catching Pokemon, thanks to my friend, the Boris bike right here which brought me here in record time, but also under 20 miles an hour or 20 kilometers an hour, whichever it is, meaning that, well, the steps count for my incubator. So that's really good. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to hang out here for a little while because it's nice and shady and not too warm. And um, I've already found a drowsy and a matchup. This is the back door to the Queen's house, by the way. I'm deadly serious. Like this is this is the back wall of the Buckingham Palace Gardens. Like we put some spikes on the top, but we did just learn to leave a door in the back. So anyone who says British people genuinely care about the Queen, we don't. We don't even bother bloody guarding her properly. I've moved over from St James to Green Park on the far side of Buckingham Palace. I'm going to be honest. I'm having a lot of server difficulties. I cannot flip log in and even when I am logged in I'm blatantly seeing the server not responding thing and when that happens no Pokemon actually appear so I'm not sure how Claire's doing I don't feel like I'm doing spectacularly well despite all the promises of Jinx as one's not even bloody shown up yet I didn't catch a horsey either meaning probably the rarest thing I've caught so far in terms of like number at the Pokedex is bloody Slowpoke that's not gonna win that's like number what 10 no it's not even that high 
It's more like 80 something. That's that's barely over halfway. That's absolutely terrible. And I've not caught that many Pokemon either. There was an Oddish at one point, but the bloody connection dropped out just before I got the bastard. And the oh, the only thing I do have going for me is I have a ton of drowsies and a ton of slow pokes. I'm hoping at least one of those can turn out to be pretty bloody tough. So I've been getting this overloaded server screen for about 15 minutes and I'm pretty sure that I didn't manage to accrue any steps when I was cycling either because uh, when I got my phone out of my pocket it was frozen and it was showing me that there was no Pokemon, no Pokestops around, nothing. So it's been about a half hour. I haven't been able to get back in due to server issues. Claire's having the same and I've heard via Twitter in Lewisham, Central London, outside London, everywhere, they're having the same thing. Uh, some people have said there is actually some form of like DDoS or hack or something that's taken the whole thing down. Don't know if it might just be additional server traffic, no bloody clue. Uh, but in either case, we are in trouble for now. So I'm gonna go and get some lunch and then we're gonna go and see what happens next. Well, I have made it to the Thames. However, the Pokemon Go servers are now dead right there above us. That's the Millennium Bridge. That's the one that gets uh, blown up by Death Eaters in the uh, Harry Potter movie. Uh, so we've had it confirmed from multiple sources that uh, Pokemon Go is down across the whole of America and indeed all of Western Europe as well. We've heard a lot that it might be a hacker attack, but equally it seems like more just likely that uh, they just launched it across Western Europe. And this is also the first Saturday since they launched it in the UK, that this is just a coincidence to be honest. So. On the plus side, I have indeed managed to get an awful lot of exercise today, which is lovely. On the downside, all of that exercise has not counted in the slightest towards hatching my bloody eggs. So that's all a bit of a bust. Okay, we are back home now, having apparently basically tried to do Pokemon Go during a massive server outage that affected just the entirety of America and Western Europe on account of a simultaneous DDoS attack and simultaneously launching Pokemon Go across uh, the entirety of the rest of Europe, excluding France, and also on top of that, the first weekend since they lost. We shouldn't have done it this weekend. But yes, we do indeed now need to determine a winner because we were able to verify that the servers dropped out pretty much simultaneously for everyone. So even though Claire and I had maybe, what, 50 minutes or something? We were, already, we were gonna do like two and a half hours. We had more like 50 minutes an hour or something. Something like something that. Something in the range of an hour. And basically it became spotty and then dropped out simultaneously for both of us. So mm -hmm. we, it, this is still fair. It's just we managed to gather a lot less, which is a shame. This is gonna be a lot shorter than I was kind of hoping it would be like. I was really hoping yeah. it would stretch up long enough that we'd have to try and solve the power problems because this thing really eats into phone batteries and we both had solutions to that. So it's a shame. It's a shame because Pokemon Go would be a wonderful game if it worked, but it doesn't. So <laughs> maybe they need to do some work on that. I don't know. Who'd have, who'd have thought if you made a game in augmented reality where you could actually go out into the world and catch Pokemon that it might be popular? Not Nintendo. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming, apparently. But yes, starting off with rarest, um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to pretty much concede this one. Um, by coincidence, the rarest thing I've got is actually pretty much the most common thing in the game, which is Bloody Drowsy, which lives at number 96 in the Pokedex. It does actually live uh, fairly far into the Pokedex, even though it is ludicrously common in this game, so I suspect you've probably got me beaten if you caught anything remotely rare. The rarest thing that I have caught today was a horsey, which is at one one, six. Yep, okay, so the first point goes to Claire uh, for rarity. Uh, next up, we move over to strength. Now, my strongest was I actually caught a Nidorina. Uh, directly behind Winston Churchill's statue outside of the Houses Ooh, of Parliament, nice. who started off pretty strong, and I've also managed to do a little bit of upgrading for as well, because of course they come with a little bit of candy. I have plenty of Stardust, so I've given her a few upgrades. So Nidorina is up to 291 CP, because unfortunately, of course, we'd originally planned to be doing this long enough that we could have done evolutions, but because we only had 50 minutes, like there was no way to catch, say, enough, you know, Drowsies, Rasters, Pidgeys, whatever. Because my original plan, as I said earlier, was to just get like 20 Pidgeys and get it up to Pidgeot. But we just didn't have time to do that. So Nidorina at 291. Claire, what have you got up against that? I have a Drowsy at 230. And that is... Um, I caught it just uh, just shy of 200 and then, uh, and then powered it up a little bit. But I had time to catch maybe three or four Drowsies. Not really... Like you said, they're everywhere in London. They're very common, but it's just 
I think we're we had, not doing yeah, time. We had the same idea then. We, we thought we'd go for, to try and get the strongest to go for a common one and then just catch loads of them and then you'd be able to get to the evolution. Yeah. I just caught everything I found, but even early on it was kind of spotty and I kept having to restart the game so that it would actually show me the Pokemon in the area. Okay, fine. So that means it is now one all. Yeah. And we therefore move on to the decider, which is the actual number of Pokemon caught. So... I have brought in Drowsy, Slowpoke, I love Slowpoke, Slowpoke's one of my favourites, Slowbro's a bro, Rattata, Spearow, Nidorina, Bellsprout, Ghastly, and Zubat. Of course, that's not the actual total number I brought in, because I brought in many duplicates of Zubat, Ghastly, and Drowsy, because when we started off, we thought we'd be able to kind of get enough to evolve. So, but those are the eight actual uniques I was able to bring in before the servers collapsed. Claire. Now, I brought in Horsey, like I already said. I also found a Bellsprout, a Zubat, and a Ghastly. Uh, I've got Drowsy, and I also have Rattata, Pidgey, and Matchup. That puts you at... Eight. Eight. That's a tie. That is a tie. What do we do now? We, that, that's not that's not supposed to, you know we can't both be Pokemon master that's not that's not how it's ever worked like Ash can't go up to Gary at the end of the elite four and they have a perfect tie and as a result of that they, they're both poker that's not how it works we can't both be the the champion of the elite four I realize that however we also can't do any Pokemon battling in this game as it currently stands no there is literally no form of <laughs> of battling or and who's had the most hours in Pokemon Diamond? Because I've okay, got about four, I've got four, because I've got four hundred and ten. So very well, Pokemon Go has ended up in a tie, a tie, and server difficulties because the servers ended up in a not. There's a tie and a not pun in here somewhere. I'm not. I'm not sure. It's it's, it's fine. It'll <laughs> that work. It doesn't work. It's, uh, it totally works. Yeah, I think we ultimately have to conclude. Like as the closest thing I'm ever going to do to a review, Pokemon Go could be a really really fun casual game to dabble in if it works, but it doesn't so that's unfortunate so there we are ladies and gentlemen that's pokemon go i don't know if we'll do any more pokemon go on the channel i mean like i'm sorry we couldn't actually show you any of the actual pokemon go but nintendo are dicks and they don't let stuff be on youtube and diddly diddly there's a reason you don't normally get nintendo games on this channel whatsoever nintendo do not play nice with youtubers but there we are pokemon go certainly something i may enjoy dabbling with on an ongoing basis if nothing else because it does get me out and about and enjoying a nice walk and a few laps around the park we've got a lovely park near us with a big body of water so all of the water we saw a well. We saw the outline of a Dratini there one time. Yeah, it we was have, three footsteps we away. We haven't we haven't found the Dratini yet, but there is a Dratini somewhere near where we. I want that bastard Dratini. We're I going mean, to get I know you and I both know that tomorrow we are going to go to the. Park yeah, we're going to get we're going to get that damn Dratini. Yeah. So yes, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. I've been Claire. This has been Media True Nerd, and this has been Pokemon Go. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Goodbye. So we, we take nothing, except for the fancy clothes we're wearing, two dogs, also I'm guessing Jasper. You're coming with me, I'm having your bloody clothes. So just the butler, one servant and two dogs, and all the clothes. Ooh, he, this guy's got- I want this guy's hat. Of course you do. I want this man's hat. Look, look at him, it's like four times higher than his head.